Okay, so welcome to another episode here on Synathus. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the video so far. Um, I'm at the moment trying to just get my bearings, uh, both with uh, video editing and also just to improve the quality of the videos over time. Um, and also then on the other hand, uh, get back into reading uh, scientific papers again. So uh, without further ado, let's have a look at another paper. <music> So this one is uh, entitled the girdle, uh, the homo naledi shoulder girdle, an adaptation to climbing boulders. Now, uh, the paper was uh, published recently on the 6th of November 2020 to be precise. It's currently available online since that date. And uh, it's in French. Uh, but uh, the uh, some of the uh, paper has been translated uh, and I'm looking at uh, the translated abstract uh, it's by Voisin Voisin V-O-I-S-I-N Voisin um, et al and it includes uh, some of the old reliables Feuerigal uh, Churchill and uh, Lee Berger of course and so let's have a look at what uh, this paper has to offer so Homo naledi a recently discovered hominin species from the rising star cave complex in Hauteng province uh, South Africa is a surprising species in more ways than one the conditions of accumulation, as well as the location of these remains in the cave, are intriguing, as is their age of approximately 300,000 years. Likewise, the number of remains, as well as their state of preservation, are exceptional. But the most astonishing discovery of all is represented by the general morphology of this new species, with an upper body adapted to climbing and the lower body presenting important adaptations to bipedalism. The shoulder joint, in conjunction with the overall morphology of the upper limb, indicates the ability to move on vertical supports. These characteristics have been interpreted as being the hallmark of arboreal behaviour. However, the tree cover in the region 300,000 years ago was very similar to that of today, that is to say very sparse. Thus, we suggest that the morphology of the pectoral girdle and the upper limb in Homo naledi represents adaptations not to arboreal behaviour, but to behaviour related to movement across and climbing on rocky walls. So that's it. That's essentially it. Um, when you look at the shoulder blades, uh, you can tell that this individual was quite mobile. The question is on what? And judging by the morphology and the various structures on the pectoral girdle, uh, it seems that it would have been that kind of feature would have been brought about by climbing on rocky walls uh, and how is that possible well much of the region around what they call the cradle of humankind uh, outside uh, Johannesburg in South Africa 
is that there's an awful lot of dolomitic limestone. Limestone that's rich in this mineral called dolomite. And because limestone is karstic, and because of the nature of the rains that can fall, little bits of the calcium carbonate are taken away with the rock and leached into the rock which creates enormous cave systems that spread underground and over time uh, these cracks and uh, holes begin to build uh, and a cave is formed and then you will have cave collapse so there's these sinkholes that can be found all across that region in South Africa. Uh, and back at the time of Homo Laledi, uh, many hundreds of thousands of years ago, you would have had sources of water at the base of these sinkholes. And indeed, some of the early hominins met their end at the base of these sinkholes. Or, uh, either that or... Uh, certain predators, carnivores, like leopards, would have brought the carcasses of their prey up into trees, namely hominins, and uh, their remains would have rotted in the trees and then fallen into these holes. And many of these trees would have overhung uh, over the edge of some of these uh, sinkholes. So an awful lot of the time it seems that we have individuals who uh, require a drink of water. But in doing so, they run a risk. If they slip uh, and the hole is significantly deeper, um, is significantly deep enough, what will end up happening is that individual will perish on the base of that sinkhole. And unfortunately, or fortunately for us, uh, that's the major reason why we have so, such a wide array of hominin fossils in that region of South Africa. But that's, that's uh, an interesting paper, and it's kind of similar to one that was suggested, uh, I think somewhere around 2011. I'll have it linked below if I can find it. And the upshot of it was that most of our evolution took place around uh, river valleys, shall we say, or fault lines. And one of the suggestions was uh, the move from being uh, in the trees to walking upright was achieved through an association with these canyons. Uh, for example, if you're at the base of a canyon and you want to go down to the water for a drink or you happen to be with your group and then a carnivore comes on the scene then, uh, you will make a run for the nearest cliff and try and climb that cliff. Uh, and over generations of learning and uh, societal development within that group, within that species, you end up uh, passing on that knowledge. And so the tendency to kind of reside, for the want of a better phrase, near cliff faces uh, becomes ingrained. And even today there are many, I think it's a, there's a species of baboon that resides uh, in an area of South Africa that resides near uh, uh, in cliff faces. So it's, it's not an unusual thing, but this particular paper suggested that uh, one of the reasons that we could suggest that bipedalism, the ability to walk upright on a constant basis, took place was because they were quite close to these rift valleys or where there's a high amount of cliff faces and that kind of thing. Uh, and so this is actually um, a little, it's, it's much more recent than what we're talking about regarding the origins of bipedalism, probably as much as 4.5 
million years ago, 4.4 million years ago. Here, we're talking about a hominin that's living in South Africa uh, 300,000 years ago or so. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a continuation, shall we say, of, of that kind of trend. And you know, it's, it's practical. You need to get a, a drink of water, or maybe you want to escape a predator. Um, it's, it's a practical way of evading a predator, or uh, to uh, quench your thirst, essentially. Uh, and maybe even, maybe even uh, sleep. So, another very, another very interesting paper. I'll just go through the abstract one more time to make sure I've got this right. Uh, much of it is repeating what we already know about Naledi, but the shoulder joint, in conjunction with the overall morphology of the upper limb, indicates the ability to move on vertical supports. These characteristics have been interpreted as being the hallmarks of arboreal behaviour. However, the tree cover in the region 300,000 years ago was very similar to that of today, that is to say, very sparse. So, oh, the paper is basically saying that there's characteristics in the shoulder that suggests that these individuals would have uh, spent enough time in the trees to warrant the markings that we see on the shoulder blades. But when you look at the uh, vegetation, uh, the record of uh, ancient plants from that time going back 300,000 years the uh, uh, distribution of tree cover would have been very sparse and so it's probably it's potentially unlikely that those trees those sparse uh, distribution of trees would have been enough to develop those markings that we see on the shoulders of Homo naledi So it's more likely that these hominins are spending a great deal of time near these kind of dolomitic sinkholes. So there you go. That's that's uh, a summary of the paper. Hope you liked it. It was a bit rambly, but uh, I'm actually really enjoying doing these videos. One of the things that I hope as I move forward is that... Um, the videos will be much tighter and they won't be as rambling but that'll that'll come with time um, so thanks very much for your patience uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe it always helps the channel uh, I want to try and expand this a little bit more and see where it takes me and uh, that is that is pretty much it let me know what you think about the origins of bipedalism and indeed if, if you have any questions about it uh, I can attempt to answer them in later videos but until next time goodbye